I started by asking a simple question. Who invented Board 8 Yacht Club and why? There is not a collection of more infamous characters and strange stories than in the world of crypto, of long calls, millionaires overnight, and people who lost it all. Board 8 Yacht Club is a similar story of strangeness, because technically, we don't know who invented Board 8 Yacht Club. True to the lore and mystery of crypto, much like Satoshi Nakamoto being a ghost, the inventors of Board 8 Yacht Club are basically ghosts. Of course, as with all good tech stories, you have an amazing origin story. Hey, I started this business in a garage, Jeff Bezos type of deal. Something that might not be true, but makes for a good story. Well, this time our story starts in Florida, in a dive bar between two individuals, Gargamel and Gordon Goner. <laughs> These are the self-proclaimed beastie boys of crypto. I say self-proclaimed because that's what they call themselves, I would never say that. But if you couldn't tell, these are pseudonyms because Gargamel and Goner aren't giving away their identity. When I got into this story, I thought I was going to be finding out about some kind of artist trying to make a countercultural message, something behind Board 8 Yacht Club that was different than what I expected. And a little bit of that happened, but it wasn't a Beeple, a talented artist with years of experience making statements on culture through his renders in 3D art. Gargamel and Goner are closer to a mix of crypto bros and literary savants. Equal lovers of Brewski's crypto and Ernest Hemingway, these guys wanted to make a splash in the crypto scene, and they were going to try out a bunch of different things to see what fit for them. But whatever they were going to make, they wanted it to be for degenerates, people like themselves. Gargamel and Goner were self-proclaimed the type of guys who would go long on some altcoins, would throw away a significant amount of money on shitcoins or things that were probably never going to make them a profit anyway. They wanted to make something that represented this type of person. They wanted somebody that was an ape. According to New Yorker, Gargamel has these wire round glasses and trim goatee, while Goner is covered in tattoos. They are millennials in the very fondest sense. Anyway, they didn't come up with the apes at first. The apes came much later. They had to bounce around a lot of ideas to get to the apes. Rarely are the first ideas pitched any good, and the first idea was certainly one that was terrible. Gargamel and Goner originally thought of doing a communal canvas that you could buy into and draw on with cryptocurrency. They ended up scrapping this idea because everybody they told about this idea said that, um, well, people would just pay to buy a space and, and draw penises everywhere. Um, to which, yes, that, that is what would happen because they've actually done this on the internet before and that that's, you, yep, you're probably looking at it on screen right now. Then the crew tried the idea of making virtual girlfriends of which many NFT project has tried to give the crypto bro their cryptocurrency girlfriend, um, to which when Gargamel and Goner thought about doing it, everybody called them weirdos and creepy so they didn't do it. I will also say that those other cryptocurrency projects that did go through with ideas like this have been called exactly those things. And then yes, they came to the apes you know and hate today over on twitter.com. Now, what is the point of this club, the Board 8 Yacht Club, the B-A-Y-C that we hear about? Well, the club is supposed to represent a lot more than just status. One of the core functions of holders of NFTs in the Board 8 Yacht Club was to create a sense of community. Because Gargamel and Goner felt that this whole idea of identity and community on the internet had dissipated over the years as we all congregate in the same spaces on social media. Gargamel wanted the monkeys to be your identity, for these apes to represent you and your personality. And so, with that, Board 8 Yacht Club took shape, with its own lore and predictions for the future about what these apes were going to be doing and who they were, what the backstory and world of this NFT actually is. And yes, Board 8 Yacht Club has lore. Well, here's the lore for Board 8 Yacht Club, right? This dive bar, the yacht club that the Board Apes go to, is 
one that they go to because they're rich. You see, in the 2030s, the billionaires of cryptocurrency, the apes who got rich off of investing in altcoins, become the next billionaires. And these apes, these cryptocurrency kings and queens, are, uh, are bored because what are you gonna do when you have billions of dollars? Buy an island and do things? See my other video. Well, these bored apes would gather in the yacht club and thus the world was born and the look and feel of the apes began to take shape. The creation of the NFT was split between the beastie boys of crypto and programmers no sass and tomato ketchup. Again, also pseudonyms. The crew also hired a team of artists to work on these apes. Overall, the cost for the entire creation of the project, all its art assets and pretty much everything cost around 40 grand. I should also mention that Board 8 Yacht Club is considered a blue chip NFT. It's amassed like a lot of money, roughly $2.9 billion in sales as of recording, which I mean, you can do the math on that uh, based on the 40 grand they paid the artist, but whatever it is, it probably wasn't enough. According to the New Yorker, Board 8 Yacht Club was supposed to be a leap in NFT projects, a big shift in the industry, because before Board 8 Yacht Club, apparently these projects were very low poly or not as high quality art, which I don't know if I'd agree with because Crypto Crit Kitties also like predates Board 8 Yacht Club by a lot as well as like Beeple's art mints being around way before Board 8 Yacht Club. Unless you're talking about CryptoPunks, which is much older than Board 8 Yacht Club, and it's just talking about identity, I'd, I'm not really sure what they're getting at here, but I don't think they were the first to the game. In case you're curious, the first ape was minted about nine months ago. The New Yorker even said that uh, it's, quote, a bit like participating in a multi-level marketing scheme. Often, a small number of crypto whales buy hundreds of NFTs apiece, and then sell off their hoards when the price rises. New collectors must constantly be found in order for the prior ones to profit. The hilarious part about all of this is, and how it's a bit of a cautionary tale, is that this NFT project wasn't ever supposed to be like this. It wasn't supposed to be the Monkey Pictures hedge fund, where people would buy mass amounts of these art pieces and try to flip them for a profit. This was supposed to be how people identified with themselves on the internet. They wanted to create a way for people to get that. However, uh, Gargamel and Goner definitely make a profit on the resales and the gas fees and whenever a, a sale of one of these NFTs goes through. So I don't think they're necessarily that bad about it, uh, but it isn't what they intended. Now, many of you looking at the NFTs over the course of this video might have gone, damn, they're ugly. Why are they so ugly? Now, it turns out there's actually a reason for this. It wasn't a decision taken lightly, as Gargamel and Goner wanted to pull from things that they remembered and enjoyed. So, the monkeys are based off of 80s culture. Late 80s and early 90s, right? So, pretty much punk, hip-hop around that era. In particular, that late 80s to early 90s time period, these things were popular. Now, considering how old these are, I'd assume some of my audience doesn't know what these are, but uh, these are Garbage Pail Kids. Uh, they are collectible cards in the late 80s and early 90s, that whole gross-out humor thing. These characters are cards you get in a pack randomly that have different values associated with them, and you basically just collect them. They all have pun names, and, and they're all deliberately made to be as ugly as possible. Um, kind of like an edgy version of Cabbage Patch Kids. But I don't think it's a coincidence that the apes are from that time period and pulling from that and not being based off of the Garbage Pail Kids just a little bit. I really do think there's a lot of design influences there and why they chose to make the apes look the way they do. For the founders of the Board 8 Yacht Club, they wanted this to be an identifying symbol. Many of the original buyers of these NFTs wanted that as well for you to identify with these bored apes for it to be yourself. It was a cool punk idea at the time before they got popular. It was these countercultural people enjoying NFT art and being a part of a new wave. And then the crypto craze caught on. New people came in and those people had one thing in mind. Make tendies, make them fast. And so many of the original holders of Board 8 Yacht Club 
have either sold or the ones that have kept um, are, are kind of actually annoyed with how people operate with the NFTs now, how it's not like what they originally signed up for, how it's turned into the monkey hedge fund. It's funny, as the NFT space has grown and artists got into it and the original reasons for why artists got into it is different from the reason people buy the art, many are getting frustrated with it in the industry. Because the meaning of the art has changed as it's become an NFT and as for many people, it's become a way to flip for profit. The crypto community right now is awash with rug pulls and scams, which definitely doesn't help the image of any of these things either. It's filled with angry frat mentality as well as really bad investment advice that is causing a lot of people to be put out above their means. This has overshadowed any of the original intentions many people had when they started doing this. It is gone and taken itself in a completely different direction than most people have put out. It's incredible how many people are actually talking about how it's not what they intended. Right now, many hold a huge disdain for NFTs and the like and, and all of that. And this has been met with death threats and various other horrible behavior by people on Twitter. So I have to encourage you to not do that despite whatever your morals say, because that's not cool. However, in the community, these things have changed from cool people doing cool things with tech to investors, because, I mean, investors aren't cool. And that's where Board 8 Yacht Club is today. Whether or not NFTs become a thing is still a conversation that people are having. Whether or not this becomes a part of society or does not remains to be seen nor is that really the point of this video. The point is to explain a little bit about what this is and how strange and different it actually was supposed to be. No one wants to make something or a piece of art and have it come out a way you didn't intend, your message to be misconstrued and your art to be used for the wrong reasons, which it seems like Board 8 Yacht Club has definitely gotten to that point. Where all of this goes next, I don't know. But I'm interested to see what happens because it seems like an interesting story and I'll continue to follow it. So this is a little shorter than some of my other videos because uh, the furry video is actually taking a lot longer than I thought it would as well as me being back in school and, and working on a short film right now. Um, so I've been busy and tired. And, and I'm very tired now, and it's my birthday, so I'm, I'm working on my birthday. When this video is out, it won't be my birthday, but you know, for next year, guys, if you wanna remember, I was born the 27th of January. <laughs> anyway, take care, guys, uh, be well. Oh, 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 and, and uh, before, before, before I go, before I go, I'm streaming on Twitch right now. If you're watching this the second the video is live, and you're done with this, head over to the stream, it'll be a great time, I'd love to have you there. And, um, you know, uh, Patreon as well. Okay? Okay, we all good? We all got it? Good, 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 good. Let's get out of here. <laughs>